Have you ever wondered how a nation, almost entirely covered by some of the world's most unforgiving desert, can sustain sprawling cities shimmering with glass towers and lush green parks? How can millions of people live, work, and even farm in a place where rainfall is a rare and celebrated event? The answer lies not on the land, but in the sea. It's a story of ambition, engineering, and a fundamental paradox. Saudi Arabia, a kingdom built on sand and oil, has turned to the vast salty waters of the Red Sea to quench its profound and ever-growing thirst. It's one of the greatest water-related undertakings in human history, a modern marvel many outside the region know little about. This isn't just drilling a well or building a simple pipeline, it's a national strategy that re-engineers the country's relationship with its environment. Imagine supplying water to a population larger than the state of Florida, in a landscape as dry as Death Valley. That is the scale of the challenge. The kingdom has essentially created rivers where none existed, flowing not from mountains but from massive factories lining its coast. This feat of human ingenuity raises pressing questions, not just for Saudi Arabia but for the world, as nations face growing water scarcity in the 21st century. The story begins with a simple, stark reality. To truly understand Saudi Arabia's water mystery, you have to start with a map. Look at the sheer size of the country, vast, connecting Africa and Asia. Now notice the colors, brown tan ochre. This is the Arabian Desert, one of the largest and driest deserts on the planet. The country has no permanent rivers or lakes, not a single one. Rainfall is astonishingly low, less than 4 inches a year in most regions. In some areas, years can go by without a single significant downpour. This is the geographical reality shaping Saudi society and its modern ambitions. For generations people relied on groundwater, ancient aquifers under the desert sands. Those reservoirs were like a savings account, fossil water collected over thousands of years, a remnant of a wetter, greener past. During the oil boom of the 1970s and 80s the kingdom drew heavily from that account. They drilled deep wells. They used the water to fuel an ambitious agricultural push, growing wheat in the desert. It was a national symbol but profoundly unsustainable. They were draining a finite resource at an alarming rate. The problem with fossil water is simple. Once it's gone, it's gone on a human timescale. It doesn't get replenished by rainfall. Experts soon realized aquifers were being depleted far faster than expected. Projections warned key freshwater sources could run dry within decades. The dream of agricultural self-sufficiency hit the reality of geography. A radical new strategy was needed. The answer to Saudi Arabia's water crisis has a name, desalination. It is a simple concept with an incredibly complex and energy-intensive execution. In essence, it is the process of removing salt other minerals from seawater to produce fresh water suitable for drinking agriculture. While the technology has existed for decades, no country has embraced it on the scale of Saudi Arabia. The kingdom is now the world's largest producer of desalinated water, the Red Sea is its primary resource. Along its nearly 1,800-kilometer coastline, colossal industrial plants run around the clock turning the sea into a source of life for millions. These are not small operations. Think of a massive power plant to get a sense of scale. The Shoaiba facility south of Jeddah on the Red Sea coast is one of the largest in the world. A sprawling complex of pipes, turbines, buildings humming with activity 24 7 it can produce hundreds of millions of gallons of fresh water every day. This water doesn't just serve Jeddah, it's pumped hundreds of miles inland supplying Mecca Taif. The numbers behind Saudi Arabia's water operation are staggering, almost difficult to comprehend. Every day desalination plants produce more than 1.5 billion gallons. Most of them sit on the Red Sea coast. That's enough water to fill over 2,400 Olympic-sized swimming pools every day. That water is transported across the country through a pipeline network stretching thousands of miles. One pipeline carries water from the Jubail plant on the Persian Gulf all the way to Riyadh, nearly 300 miles across desert. This system includes pipes, pumping stations, reservoirs, and is one of the largest conveyance systems ever built. Imagine the engineering to push billions of gallons uphill, from sea level up to Riyadh's high plateau over 2,000 feet of elevation. It takes immense energy and a sequence of powerful pumps to keep it flowing. These aren't just pipes, they are man-made rivers hidden beneath the sand carrying the nation's lifeblood. Building and maintaining it costs tens of billions of dollars. Let's break down consumption. The average resident uses over 70 gallons per day. You know, the story of Saudi Arabia's water supply is also a story of technological evolution. 
While the old energy-guzzling method of multi-stage flash distillation or MSF built the foundation, the future is really being shaped by a far more efficient technology, reverse osmosis or RO. This process, it works on a completely different principle. Instead of boiling water, it uses high pressure to force seawater through special membranes. These membranes act like extremely fine filters. They allow water molecules to pass through while blocking larger salt molecules and other impurities. It's more elegant and significantly more energy efficient. The shift to RO is a game changer for the kingdom. RO plants can use up to 75% less energy than thermal distillation. That's a critical advantage for reducing domestic oil use and lowering carbon footprint. Newer plants like Rabig 3 on the Red Sea are built exclusively with RO. These facilities are more efficient, more modular and quicker to construct. They represent the next generation of desalination, smarter and more sustainable. Innovation doesn't stop at the core technology. They're testing new membrane types that are more durable and less prone to clogging. They're integrating desalination with renewable energy. Imagine desert solar farms, panels glistening under the sun, powering RO plants on the coast. While Saudi Arabia's ability to create fresh water is, you know, a triumph of engineering, it comes at a significant price. The first and most obvious cost is financial. Building this infrastructure is extraordinarily expensive. Operating it is extraordinarily expensive. Maintaining it is extraordinarily expensive. A single large-scale desalination plant can cost billions to construct. Operational costs are immense. The energy needed by burning fossil fuels represents a huge ongoing expense. Or, powering plants through other means also cost money. Water is heavily subsidized, consumers pay only a fraction. This reliance creates energy dependence. For decades the kingdom burned oil to produce water. At its peak the sector used hundreds of thousands of barrels per day. That oil could be sold abroad for revenue. As population and demand grow, the energy for water trade-off deepens. Beyond financial and energy costs, there's an environmental price. Desalination produces highly concentrated brine. For every gallon of fresh water, roughly one and a half gallons of brine are created. Disposing of this waste is a major challenge. The standard practice is to pump brine back into the sea. That raises coastal salinity and can devastate marine ecosystems. Finally, there's a strategic cost. Centralizing water supply in a few dozen coastal plants creates vulnerability. These facilities are critical infrastructure. Any disruption could be catastrophic for millions. The Red Sea is a unique and precious ecological treasure. It's one of the world's warmest and saltiest seas, home to stunning coral reef systems remarkably resilient to high temperatures. These reefs support a dazzling array of marine biodiversity, with many species found nowhere else on Earth. However, the massive scale of desalination along its shores is placing this delicate environment under increasing strain. The primary culprit is the discharge of brine. Pumping billions of gallons of hypersaline water back into the sea creates plumes of dense salty water that can smother marine life on the seabed. This isn't just about the salt. The brine discharged from desalination plants is often warmer than the surrounding seawater, contributing to thermal pollution. It also contains residual chemicals used in the desalination process, such as chlorine, which is used to prevent biofouling on the intake pipes, and anti-scaling agents. When this chemical cocktail is released into the marine environment, it can be toxic to fish, coral, and other organisms. The cumulative effect of dozens of plants discharging this effluent day after day is a legitimate cause for concern among marine biologists. The very intake of seawater also has an impact. The massive pipes that draw water into the plants can also suck in fish eggs, larvae, plankton, and other small marine organisms. This process, known as impingement and entrainment, effectively removes the building blocks of the marine food web from the ecosystem. Saudi Arabia has solved its 20th century water problem with a monumental 21st century solution. But as we stand here today, on September 11, 2025, the story is far from over. The kingdom has proven it can make the desert bloom and build gleaming cities on sand. But this success has created a new set of challenges. Can this industrial-scale water production be sustained for the next hundred years? And what will be the ultimate price paid by the Red Sea, the silent partner in this grand experiment? These are the open-ended questions that will define the next chapter in the nation's history. The path forward is likely to be a dual one. On one hand, the reliance on desalination will undoubtedly continue and even grow. The push will be towards greater efficiency and sustainability, more reverse osmosis, more solar-powered plants, more innovation in brine management. 
Can technology evolve fast enough to stay ahead of the environmental consequences? The dream is a closed loop system where desalination is powered by renewable energy and its waste products are repurposed, creating a truly circular water economy. This is the technological frontier that Saudi Arabia is now exploring. The real challenge is cultural, shifting the mindset from consumption to stewardship. The choices made in Riyadh and along the Red Sea coast in the coming years will not only shape the future of a nation, but also offer critical lessons for all of humanity on how we value, manage and live with our most precious resource water.